Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure, coming to you from Waikiki Beach, right above St. Augustine's Catholic Church. Uh, here at Deep Adventure Ministries, we believe that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And we've got a wild show for you today. we got Father Jeff Kirby with us. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure, everybody. Here in Waikiki Beach, we've had two back-to-back -back swells of 18 to 20 foot plus surf and you know cindy and i uh we met because of tandem surfing where i i take her take her out take i competed taking a woman out and lifting her over my head in these extreme lifts and uh, i met cindy because of that praise god how god leads you through life through the the upward desires that he gives you and uh and so we were out surfing yesterday at a place called queen's break right in front of our house and there was kind of a vestige of the swell out there and all of a sudden the big set came and we paddled in and there's all these people in front of us all very joyful everyone's happy because there's been good waves we paddled really hard and dropped in we did this radical hard bottom turn and normally i would lift her but the wave was just like every any moment it looked like it was going to close out and we were just flying flying down the line and at one point, my wife just yelled out, awesome, like that. And it freaked me out. I actually kind of wiped out because of it. That's what it's like when you drop into the, to the wild adventure of God's will. First of all, you don't catch a wave like that unless you really want it. You don't want to paddle for a big wave unless you're committed. Uh, but once you're committed to that wave, you don't get to tell that wave what to do. You, you, you're, you, uh, you flow with it, and you express yourself on that wave. But whenever we paddle in after riding a, a great wave like that, people never come up to us and say, wow, you guys are amazing. That was awesome. They always say, wow, that was a, that was a good wave. So they give glory to the wave. When you ride a wave, uh, sometimes when it's really big, people don't have a sense of dimension of it until they see someone carving that face. So when you're moving in the Holy Spirit, your life will give that sense of the grandeur of the Lord, but you don't want to be the, the focus of it. It's the wave that's the focus. In fact, the ultimate, the ultimate for a surfer is to be totally hidden in the tube of the wave, which I thought we were going to get to, but we were just coming across the boneyards and we were going to get ripped up if we didn't just kind of bail. But, but that's, that's, that's what we did. We, we paddled with all our might. Then we just let that wave propel us. And that's what you want when you move when you move in the Holy Spirit. Wait on Him. Wait for the big one, and then paddle in with all your might and say, "Yes, Lord, we want Your will be done." And then you may be seen and not us. And then run with that and let let people give glory to the Lord. We have someone with us today, Father Jeff Kirby. Father Kirby, uh, he's from Our Lady of Grace Catholic Church in Indian Land, South Carolina, and. I'm just blown away that we get to have him on our show. You're going to love him, too. This is Father Kirby. Aloha, Father. Hello. Good to see you, Bear. Is it? See, that's the problem. <laughs> Most people on the radio show, they don't have to see me, but you actually can. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can trust me. It's good to see you. <laughs> so good to see you. And, you know, we're fellow Steubenville people. I, I'm, I've am i been attending my master. I'm probably their longest uh, master's degree candidate. <laughs> <laughs> in history because I take courses every year or so on the online but you're you you're a, a Franciscan University uh, alumni absolutely to, to, to all of our uh, fellow alum and, and, and students I say uh, go Barons um, so yeah I went there as an undergrad and then stayed for graduate school uh, undergrad in history and, and graduate degree uh, in philosophy so I, I actually really didn't study theology while, while I was at Steubenville but I always argue I say you know if you go to Steubenville, just being on campus or, or just being involved in the programs like is the theology itself, no matter what you study. Hey, man, you know, I'll tell you, when I'm on the mainland, people will say, I have a friend that says, you know, Hawaii sticks to you. Wherever you go, you, there's just something about Hawaii that sticks to you. But when you're around a Steubenville person, you already know it. You don't even have to ask them. There's something about the, their, their ability to be, to communicate with clarity and with devotion and with 
dedication and commitment. It just, you know yes. that there's a solidness there. And, you know, I, I don't want to, I, I normally I'll spend a lot of time talking backstory. I just want to get into this. Father, we're going through a season now where um, we need to clarify, know our faith and stand for our faith. But I wanted to start out with just the, which is the most simple thing. Well, you know, basically when someone dies, they go to heaven, right? There's this wide road <laughs> to heaven. And, uh, you know, God, you know, if Jesus was here in Waikiki today, he'd go right across the street to Starbucks where my wife likes to go every day about this time. And he would probably have a Starbucks, a latte, nothing too strong, and probably do poetry reading, you know. And, and the name of the poem would probably be, Why Can't We All Just Get Along? And all, everybody gets to heaven, you know. <laughs> so so what is what is the... The teaching of the church, the historical teaching of the church. What, what if if someone's listening right now? Some guy in a black pickup truck's driving down the road. What does he need to do to go to heaven? Yes, yes. So, so to your point, Bear, uh, the belief that you know all that a person has to do to get to heaven is is die. So, hey, everyone who who dies uh, goes to heaven, and and we see this in our culture, and sometimes they don't even speak of heaven. Uh, you'll hear these terms. Uh, they've gone to a better place or these type of, of things. And, and all that, of course, has to be unmasked. And we, and we have to dive deeper as, as, as you're uh, recommending, as, as you're giving me this opportunity that, you know, ultimately, well, yes, we seek goodness as human beings. We were made good, uh, we are fallen. And we should never be shocked at the capacity for evil that's in our own hearts. We, we see it reflected in, in grave exaggerations and concentration camps and killing fields and, and abortion and so on. Uh, that's the capacity of the human heart for evil left without grace and so we know that we have this this good nature that's fallen and the task that we need to do in order to see receive salvation is to allow god's grace which is his life his power within us to heal that fallenness and to allow us to restore that goodness in christ and that's the work of salvation how does that happen an ultimate, total, unconditional surrender to the workings of Jesus Christ to allow the grace to enter into our souls, to begin to follow not our paths, which again are fallen, we can deceive and lie to ourselves, but to follow his most excellent way of love, to be a person of, of gentle strength, but of kindness, to be a person who's merciful, to be a person who's chaste and has self-control. This is the way of the Lord Jesus. So to imitate the Lord in all that he has done, all that he lived, and to follow that example to allow the grace that we receive from that way of life to further enhance and to uh, you know remove that fallenness to heal that fallenness uh, so that the goodness can be restored and, and we can enter paradise in christ now as soon as i say this here, here's the big debate people will say well you know wh where do i get this this grace um you know okay so just following the way of the lord jesus well yes but but that grace it has to come from somewhere else in order to initiate that, in order to sustain that. And, and bear, that is the sacraments. Like trying to get people to understand, you know, the, the sacraments regrettably in many people's minds have become idols. They don't care about Jesus. They don't care about the way of the Lord Jesus. They don't care about discipleship. They want to get the sacraments. Just give me the sacraments, right? Mm -hmm. So we baptize babies into a faith that the parents do not know. We give Holy Communion to children who do not know Jesus. We confirm uh, baptized uh, pagans and so on. You know, I'm speaking in broad terms, but but pure re research supports this that that we have really, you know, found our found ourselves in a difficult place in the church in large part because people don't understand the role of the sacraments. The sacraments give us grace so that we can then follow the way of the Lord Jesus, and then allow that grace to be integrated in us and and to flourish. So that we can begin to continue the work of the Lord Jesus. Like that, that's the work of salvation. So when Paul tells us in Philippians, in fear and trembling, I work out my salvation, this is what he's talking about, right? This is like that real wrestling match with our own fallenness, our pride, our arrogance, and, and, and our anger, our envy, our lust, whatever it might be, all the above, and to allow grace to really come in there and begin to work and heal, to bring light in the midst of darkness, healing and restoration in the midst of brokenness, that's salvation. And it's dirty, it's in the trenches, it's it's an all out fight, it's a wrestling match, it's a constant surrender, it's backsliding, it's recovering, it's all the above, shake it up, and you have the drama of covenant salvation in Jesus Christ. 
thank you, Father Kirby. <laughs> I was about to say we need to go to a break, but you you know that that so powerful. You know what God has given to you know what God works into us. We need to work out. I know Martin Luther said it's by faith alone that you are saved, but the only place faith alone shows up is. James, where it says it is not by faith alone, but by works also. What God works into us, we cooperate with his grace, and, and, and we cling to him, and we learn to love God back. When we come back, Father, we're going to talk more about salvation, and we're going to talk about standing for truth. Father Kirby, where can people find you? Yes, I'm on Grace Lily Productions on YouTube and on Twitter, at Father Kirby. YouTube at, at Father Kirby. This is the Bear Watson Convention. We'll be right back. This is Dan Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up, White. The color white was on my mind one fall day as I was moseying down the old Ronald Reagan Freeway through Simi Valley, California. Four white cars, one right behind the other, were coming up behind me at a fast enough clip to cause me to nudge my pickup over to the outside lane. Scurrying by, each car had its own variety of white. Two sort of ugly one not impressive, and one hotter than a Brandon iron on a roundup morning. The color white is one intriguing color. Some think of it as just plain old white. For me, white stands a few hands above its compadre colors, as white is something you can easily add any other color and still make beautiful. And yet, white can stand on its own and look mighty fine just as is. Makes me recall when I was a little Catholic boy. Our nun taught us about sin at catechism class. For you Protestants, that's Catholic Sunday school held on Wednesday nights. She would put black spots on a white circle to demonstrate what sin did to our hearts. Well, anywho, in a world that's in serious denial about personal responsibility, a man who is true to himself got to admit that he's accumulated assortment of those black spots. It was Jesus who said the shedding of his blood was the price paid for ridding our hearts of those black spots. By faith, I regularly and humbly apply Christ's blood to my black spots as they seem to come back real regular-like. Darn it anyhow. Something you might want to consider doing for yourself, that is, taking care of your black spots. Jesus is in the business of erasing such things. This is Dan Laboon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest today is Father Jeff Kirby. I wanted to warn the men uh, that you probably shouldn't be listening to this radio show. You should probably change the channel to soft rock or something like that. But actually, I want to invite the men because I know I know men in your very nature, you have a desire to be heroic. It's the way you were wired. And we want to invite you to go to bearschoolofmanliness.com and join Bear's Man Cave and then also join uh, the School of Manliness. We have a, a Zoom video chat every two weeks. We have a, a Facebook group, but it's not Facebook. It's on our own platform, so you don't have to worry about all the all the pollution that's on Facebook. And then we go, we bring you through a three year. We mentor you through actually a three year cycle on on developing manliness, setting goals, and setting a new trajectory and getting traction in your life. So go to bearschoolofmanliness.com. dot com. We're talking with Father Kirby, who I'm just so fired up to have you on my show. He is the, the pastor at Our Lady of Grace Catholic Church in India Land, South Carolina. So, Father, you know, I've been reading, you know, Dante's Inferno, trying to understand it for the hundredth time. <laughs> but, you know, the wow. thing is, the, 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 going into the Inferno, trying to read all, but going through the Inferno, the first layer of that Inferno, to me, the way that looks like, it's the, the people that wouldn't make a stand. They they didn't want to be too strong one way or too strong the other. To me, you know what that is? That's a nice guy. There's a saying that says, all dogs go to heaven. I think people think all nice guys go to heaven. But nice guys are the problem. 
We need yes. good men and who understand what the word good is. What would you say is the, is the definition? The, can you give us the difference between nice guy and good man? What would you say is, what does a good man look like? Does, it, does a good man ever get angry? Does he ever, does he ever point out? Uh, you know what I'm trying to say? Absolutely. Go for it. Yeah. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, first and foremost, I, I want us to point to the Lord Jesus himself, who is, uh, you know, perfect and, and, and modeled for us that, you know, when his father's house was being sacrileged, and being turned into a den of thieves like we saw righteous anger that he was going to and was angry and was going to defend and use what was necessary in order to defend what was right and noble and beautiful uh, we see that the lord defended the woman who was caught in adultery when the crowd came against her he was willing to defend and, and, and to be a guardian of the vulnerable and the weak but you also see immense compassion as he's sitting talking to woman to the woman at, at the at samaria at, in samaria at uh, jacob's well so we see all these different virtues and, and expressions throughout the life of our Lord. And that's manhood. Manhood isn't just, well, you, you're always just really kind and, 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 and patient. That's a part of it. Or manhood isn't you're always you know, exercising justice and, and righteous anger. That's not it only. It's all the above. And ultimately, it's you know, exercising faith, hope, love. We receive these virtues at baptism. They're supernatural to believe in God, to hope in God, to love God. And then we exercise prudence. So our spiritual tradition says that after faith, hope, love, the most important virtue is prudence. Why? Because prudence allows us to assess the state of affairs and say, what other virtue is being called forth in this situation? Is it patience, kindness, righteousness, righteous anger? Is it justice? What virtue is being called forth? And we see that in perfect form in the life of our Lord. So we see righteous anger because there are times when men should be righteously angry when God's house is being sacrileged, when their wife is being disrespected, when mm -hmm. their children are being threatened, the moral health of their children are being threatened. So we see that in the life of our Lord. But but if I can, once I, of course, do, do, uh, do reverence to, to our Lord, if I can maybe just cite another example, because once we deal with Jesus, it's like, wow, okay, there's, there's no comparison, right? You know, uh, but let me just give another example. Uh, right before God's people entered the promised land after 40 years in the desert, Moses sends spies into the promised land and says, go check it out. Tell us what we're up against. Because they knew that the people of Canaan had taken over the land. And these are some really despicable people, like horrible things like child sacrifice. Moses tells the spies, go and, and, and check. So the spies go, they come back. And some of the spies are, are really scared. They said, these people are huge. They're like giants. We're, we're like grasshoppers compared to them. And they get scared and they, they get nervous. And we can imagine their knees are shaking. And they say, we can't do this. We can't fulfill what God has said. Uh, fidelity becomes a question mark. Uh, let's just hightail it back to Egypt. I mean, they, they need builders. I'm sure they'll take us back. So we see some of the spies are just complete wimps, right? But meanwhile, Joshua and Caleb, they stand up and say, yeah, they're big, but you know what? We have God on our side and we will remain faithful. We are going to fight the good fight and we've got this under control for the Lord, the living God is on our side. He is with us. Of course, later in salvation history, Joshua will echo this. When the tribes of Israel begin to engage in idolatry, once they take the promised land, Joshua calls them the Shechem. I mean, talk about like a Joshua moment, right? <laughs> and he says, listen, I don't know who you're gonna worship, but let me make it clear that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I think that is a powerful display of moral fortitude and of manhood. Like, I don't care what's around me. I don't care what this fallen culture is doing. I know that as for me and my house, the people that I'm responsible for, the ones that I will answer to God for, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I think those are powerful examples that we can draw from salvation history. You know, men talk about stepping into the breach Men talk about standing your ground. It's time maybe to start taking back some lost ground. Um, what do you see? How, what is a man's response? What is our people of faith's response to to what's happening? I mean, we've seen a, we've seen the world slide off the cliff in the last eight or nine months with the socialistic uh, takeover of just seems like everything. Uh, Christianity has historically been people that go against the current you know we've always been kind of renegades <laughs> rebels i mean you look you look at the people in africa and how they've had to go against the flow look at the people in china right now look at the people in the middle east western civilization you know is 
has gone the way of secular humanism and socialism and and it's it's kind of like whatever feels good is right how do we stand our ground where where do where do we how first of all how do we form the understanding of what our faith is and what it dictates our 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 response should be to the situation yes, we're yes. in now yeah i would say first uh, once we begin to look at the universal church and we see the heroism of the church in africa or latin america and parts of asia then it becomes very clear that western believers are an embarrassment to the universal church we have become profoundly soft and have in many ways accommodated and become compromised by the culture around us we forget that secularism is not some empty or removed philosophy secularism and let's be clear about this secularism is a false deity it is a god so it may not be ball of canaan or it might be, not be some you know pagan god of, of mythology but this secular god is a more contemporary form and he's more vicious because he's a lot more sly a lot more seductive he has a lot uh, a more revised vocabulary so for example mm -hmm. let's look at canaan i mentioned joshua and, and and the canaanites child sacrifice maternal incest horrible things right what do we see in our world today variations of that a total assault on motherhood where mothers are supposed to be embarrassed about being mothers women are told that motherhood hinders them right we're also uh in terms of child sacrifice the the vast uh, opportunity and, and slaughter of the unborn in large part because fathers have been removed from the home and fatherhood has been stripped of the authority given to it by God and the list goes on so what we find out is that secularism is really just another false God and there are a lot of Christians who worship it and what is the one thing that sec the secular God demands that we completely succumb to the desire for respectability that we are worried about what our neighbors think. We're worried about what they will say of us. We worry if we're going to be accepted. And we are willing to give up anything. The dignity of the unborn, the uh, proper understanding of marriage. We're willing to do anything in order to show that respectability, in order to worship that secular God. So in response to that, what mm -hmm. do we see? Well, throughout salvation history, as you were saying, Bear, it is the believer who stands out against that. It is the Joshua who says to, to the Israelites who are worshiping the false gods, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And we see that throughout salvation history, that it's the righteous ones, the good ones. Here, here's the part that will really shake some of your listeners, that when God finally had enough with his people, after multiple and multiple prophetic warnings and exhortations and admonitions, and finally he said, okay, I will allow the unbeliever to storm and destroy my holy city, desecrate and destroy my own temple and wipe out the ark of my presence on earth. I will allow the Babylonians to come and to destroy Jerusalem. I'm going to allow that. And right before he did that, as a last act of kindness, he told the angels before he unleashed them to, to bring forth his vengeance. He said, you go throughout the city of Jerusalem and anyone who is grieving the evil of the day, place the towel on their forehead, and do not harm them. Father, we uh, have to go. Uh, we'll be yeah, right back okay. with more. But I, I need. I want. I want to leave that that right there at that moment because repentance has to start at the church. We'll be right back. We're talking with Father Kirby. Father, what's what's the best place for them to find you? Yep, uh, Twitter f uh, Twitter at Father Kirby or YouTube Grace Lily Productions. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Bear Wozniak, and I'm coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach with a deep adventure moment. Now, I'm thinking about a friend of mine, you should know him in Santa Cruz, and he's one of the first men that went out and surfed Mavericks. A huge, gnarly, cold wave, 45 foot faces, lip, the lip of the wave is 10 foot thick, and it just throws in all kinds of ugly patterns. And he got to the beach, he grabbed his big longboard, his rhino chaser, his, uh, his big wave gun, and oh he realized he didn't bring his wax he didn't care he said i'm going to go out and paddle out anyway he paddled out at mavs dropped in on a huge wave and as he dropped in he stood up on his board now the reason why we have wax is it gives us traction on the board we 
it's that paraffin type wax, special kind of wax, and it gives us a grip on the board. He stood up on that board on one of the gnarliest waves you can ride, and he started sliding down the face of the board, and then he did something worse. He started skipping across the surface of the water. When you wipe out on a big wave, you want to drill a hole in that wave and go as deep as you can. But he skipped across the face and had a great a big wipeout. And here's the thing, are you waxing up your surfboard? Another way to say it, are you keeping uh, are you keeping the fire hot? Another way to say it is, are you sharpening your sword? Are you sharpening your blade? As men, we need to be, pre be prepared for the battle. You need to keep your, your iron in the fire. You need to keep your blade sharp. You need to wax your surfboard and be ready because God is calling you to drop into big waves. In fact, if you don't realize it, you're already out in huge surf. So spend your time in prayer, receiving the sacraments, reading scriptures, praying your rosary. The greatest, most powerful way uh, I know uh, to pray an intercessory prayer other than the Eucharist. This is Bear Wozniak with a deep adventure moment. Keep your surfboards waxed. Men, are you looking for something that you can lead your sons through that will help them grow in manly virtue? Our new school of manliness provides you and your sons with 36 months of audio, video, and written lessons that includes a full toolbox with all of our long ride home TV series, all the video versions of the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show, Bear's Daily Catechism, and a year video podcast, Pat Gervais, the Catholic Biker Daily Rosary, and a lot more. You can lead your sons of confirmation age and above through this manly school. Go to deepadventure.com and look into Bear's new school of manliness. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to say alo aloha to all the mama bears out there. There's no one more fierce than a mama bear. I've had a cabin in Glacier Park, Montana. I was just there again. Hadn't been there in many years, but my wife and I visited there this summer. And there's nothing more fierce than a mama bear. They're not sweet and cuddly all the time. They're fierce. You don't mess with one. One time my dad was hunting, and he brought down an elk. As he went to track that elk, um, he, came up he came up behind what he thought was a log, I realized it was a mama bear uh, kind of mm -hmm. starting to investigate the elk that he had brought down. And then he looked to the right, and there were her cubs. So he was between her cubs and the mama bear. Bad position to be. And so we love our mama bears, the women that follow our ministry. We actually have, I think, maybe more women that love our ministry than men. But we know you're standing for your families and you're standing for your men. So we want to invite you. Go to our website, deepadventure.com, and join the mama bears. We have a special outreach to you now, too, including a special uh, community. It's a Facebook Type group where we do our we, we provide daily readings and inspirations in a place where you can all uh, communicate and talk and pray and pray for your families and pray for the men in your life. So we have Father Kirby with us. He's the pastor of Our Lady of Grace in Indian Land, South Carolina. Father, we were talking about the the the, the situation that we find ourselves in right now in society. The uh, the uh, the softness of the of of Christians and how 
God's judgment will begin at the house of God, but there's a special mercy for those, as you were saying, for those who, who repent. We need to, we as, a, we as members of the Catholic Church, we need to repent not just for our own sins, but for the, corporal, the corporate sins of the church. And we need to push the reset. I don't hate to use that word, but we need to, we need to start fresh in our devotion and commitment to the Lord. Yes, yeah. So you know, if we go back to that imagery where the prophet Ezekiel describes where right before God unleashed his angels to assist the Babylonians in the destruction of the holy city, Jerusalem, and the destruction of the temple of God, that right before that, the angels were told, go throughout the city, and if you see anyone who's grieving over the evil, place a towel. And the towel is like a, a small, actually a variation of the cross, actually, which is itself um, quite prophetic. But place a towel on their forehead and do them no harm. Now, now what that tells us is that as we fight for righteousness, as we try to hold the line in terms of what is morally right and good and beautiful, that sometimes even if we're not victorious in the, in, in the battle of our culture, that if we grieve and show repentance, that God is going to bless that because it shows there's a cleanliness of heart, that we understand that the things of our culture, the fallen things of our culture that we fight against, and, and again, sometimes we will not have victory in this life, that we fight against, but it will be the fact that we grieve the evil of our day that will itself become purifying and a means of salvation. And, so mm -hmm. I think we have to keep in mind as, as we battle that victory is the Lord's. I, I sometimes think, you know, in terms of, of, of recent salvation history, and in, in terms of, of church history, you know, Maximilian Kolbe, the saint of Auschwitz, he never saw the victory in this life. He, he took the place of a married man. He, he allowed himself to, to suffer the starvation bunker. Eventually, it was died by, by lethal injection. He never saw the victory in this life. But throughout his entire life, those last agonizing days, he knew in whom he had placed his trust, and he was going to be faithful. And imagine the victory that has been given now through his witness you know, to the church in Poland, to the universal church, to the edification, the building up of marriage and family life, fatherhood, because one man, one disciple, chose to be faithful in a living hell on earth. Okay, let's talk about this living hell on earth. You know, I'm a little bit concerned. Maybe I, I, I mean, I, I love my church. But when I go to Mass now, every time the Mass begins at the church I attend, they emphasize that we're a church that believes in gospel values. And that kind of scares me. It's almost like, it's almost like you take the gospel and then you're going to apply it in some sweet, nice way that's disordered. And I want to talk to you, I want to ask you right now, the prophet Ezekiel standing here, what would his indictment be today of America? What are the things that g many people who say they're Catholics voted to have come into our world? What is the indictment today? What do we need to wake up and be alert about? And then we'll talk yes. about what we need to do about it. Can you can you be Ezekiel yes. for, for us for a moment? <laughs> I'll attempt. To, I'll, I'll say this, Bear. It's worth reminding all the baptized that as Ezekiel was chosen as a prophet, on the day of our baptism, we were all anointed prophets. You are an anointed prophet. I'm an anointed prophet. Every baptized Christian is an anointed prophet. So in, in many respects, we are called to be those Ezekiels. As I look at our world today, I think the greatest evil that we cannot talk more about, and we have to constantly bring this to people's attention because we cannot allow this to become normalized, is the scourge of abortion. Because abortion is the false anti-sacrament of the culture of death. And just as we will do anything to revere and to honor and to protect the Eucharist, those who worship evil, they will do anything in order to protect that false sacrament. So the slaughter of the unborn, I mean, literally a child in the womb of its mother, like the safest place that should be on the face mm -hmm. of the earth, becomes now a place of death. As Pope Francis has said, an, an abortion doctor, when you go there, it's like hiring a hitman, right? This is a terrible, profound evil. And, and concurrent with that is the legalization of gay marriage. Like the, this is an affront to the very nature of marriage itself to the complementarity between man, a man and a woman, uh, the, the natural parenthood that flows from marriage. So in terms of looking at, you know, what are the, the areas of, of concern? Like we look at abortion, we look at gay marriage, and then we can begin to fill in all the other areas, like the lack of belief among the baptized. It, it is shocking. It, it's shocking that we have so many baptized who really don't know or don't believe or who are in open rebellion against clear teachings of the Lord Jesus. In my area here in the southeast of our country, the evangelicals, they don't want to work with us in ecumenism because they don't trust us. Because in all of the stats, 
Like you look at all the Pew research, the Catholics don't believe in a bodily re resurrection, don't believe in the inerrancy of scripture. The Catholics, major group supports abortion, major group that supports gay marriage. Because it the sounds like gospel values. Do you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> right. It's like a false compassion. Yes. Well, and even the term values, when we speak about the gospel, is, is completely misplaced. Value is something that I subjectively give merit to or credence to. When we speak about the gospel, it's not a value. If we're going to use any term, we want to talk about vir virtue or even more to the point, discipleship, that we're talking about Christian discipleship. So gospel values, is, as you indicated, that can go anywhere. Someone can manipulate anything because value, it's a subjective term. Virtue is objective. This mm -hmm. is right. This is wrong. Mm -hmm. Discipleship is even more profound. This is what the Lord commands and mm. what I choose as his disciple to obey and to do. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you this. Let me let me bring this to the next level. OK, let's we got a couple more minutes. Socialized medicine, the socialization of, uh, of, of, of socialized medicine, uh, the forgiveness of, of college debt. The, the, it's kind of like big, big mama. Yes. Is that a good thing to do all that? Is that, is that a gospel value? Is, I mean, probably, probably they say it is. Right. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, socialism, there has never been a more wicked system, more opposed to the Christian faith in human history. There are over 21 million believers who on the last day will be raised from the frozen fields of Siberia in order to cry out over the consequences of socialism. So mm. whether you want to call it socialism or communism or Marxism, the distinction is all academic. At the end of the day, the consequences on people is real. So communism pretends to be a pseudo church. They say, oh, well, we'll provide all these resources. We will help humanity. We will provide food. There'll be no want. They promise everything. They give nothing. And then in and, and the end, what happens is certain tyrannical leaders are raised up who have absolutely no respect for human rights or human dignity. And we have seen this time and time again, especially as believers. And I say, you know, you know is it good that we have universal health care? Yes. Right. That, that's something we actually argue for as Christians. Right. Does that mean that the government should provide for it? No. In fact, the fact the reason that the government has to get involved is because as a church, believers in terms of, of those who own their businesses, those who are involved in, in the areas of, of, of the market, and the fact that we have not been living our values, like the, our, our beliefs, like what we hold to, our convictions, I should say, that that's why the government has gotten to, to be involved. Socialism takes a good thing and says, we're going to mandate it and require it. Well, you can't do that. Like You can't force goodness. And then ultimately what they do is they never give what they promise. So mm -hmm. they take they promise they do nothing. We're, so we're all these good things are, are positive in themselves. We're not opposed to them. But as Christians, they have to be born from freedom. Well, that's one of the things, I'm, like I said, I've been studying Dante again. One of the things he says, one of, one of the levels is the people who take something good and then twist it. You know, they, they, they desire a good thing, but they desire it in a wrong way. We're talking with Father Kirby, uh, the pastor of our Lady of Grace in Indian Land, South Carolina. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. There's a song my wife Cindy shared with me that goes, where have all the cowboys gone? We don't need more nice guys. What the world needs is good men. Men who don't apologize for pursuing manly virtue. Men who willingly step into the role of protector, provider, and servant leader. We created the school of manliness just for men like you. Join our school and our non-Facebook man cave community all available on our smartphone app and on your PC. Go to deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. 
The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our, our guest today, our guest adventure guide is Father Kirby from Our Lady of Grace Catholic Church in Indian Land, South Carolina. Father Kirby, we need to we need to get more people to go to church. We need more people there. We need to fill up our churches. And one of the ways to do that is to soft pedal the gospel and get some better music. You know, get some get some you know, I used to lead worship. I used to be a I used to, you know, do the folk mass and we had a drum and a flute and it was neat. But that that's kind of what we need to do. We need to do a video presentation too. We need some audio video presentations because we need to attract people to the church. Yes. Um, so, I, <laughs> so I just I do, I just want that, but that's what you hear, right? Right. What's right, your response and, and, to that? And, what is worship? Well, so worship is the adoration of God by the baptized. So, uh, I think that you know, as Christians, we are called to go and and to to share the good news of the great commission given to us by the Lord. So, absolutely, we need to go. We need to speak the truth in love, and and share it. And we try to invite all men and women to come to worship. But when it comes to worship itself, like worship is about adoration. So whenever people start to speak about, you know, well, if we do this, more people will come, or this will make us make it more satisfying. Uh, I start to get very nervous because, yes, our work of evangelization is a part of the church. When we come to to, to liturgy, to, to the mass, it's it's worship, it's adoration. So all the applications of evangelization should be put on pause. I don't do something at mass because people will come. I do things at mass because they help me to worship God because they truly worship God, right? He's the focus. So if this makes me, you know, emotionally satisfied, wonderful. But if it doesn't, it's still wonderful because it's the adoration of God. So uh, I think in terms of this uh, type of over emotionalization we could even say by extension uh, feminization of, of the liturgy uh, that you know has dire consequences uh, in in terms of the understanding of proper worship in terms of of families at worship and, and let's also just address the fact that we have so few men at worship uh, we, we know the statistics if a man if a father leads his children in worship the 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 rates exponentially higher in terms of that person that child believing in god so if dad's there they're going to believe if dad's there they understand god if dad's there they have a healthy understanding of authority and, and we see that so what happens the evil one knows get the fathers out diminish the family make the liturgy all about this kind of happy clappy it's all about us and then what happens is real things happen to people real sufferings real heartaches and it appears to them as if the gospel has no message or no real power and they say, "What's the point?" We we see we see this soft peddling um, of the gospel too. You know, it's like give your life to Jesus, everything's going to be great. That's not kind of the way it was. You know, in the early church, it was like give your life to Jesus and become a martyr. Yes. The, and, and the the you know, I, I loved I loved Samuel. I think it was Moses or that said, "If you follow these commandments, all will be well with you." I think maybe Joshua might have reiterated that. But Samuel said something really interesting once. He said. If you obey the, the word of the Lord, then you will, you know, if you walk in the ways of the Lord, then you will walk in the ways of the Lord. <laughs> Walking in the ways of the Lord is the purpose. It's not to get happy clappy, and it's not all of the rewards and even the spiritual goodies that God gives us, you know, when the Holy Spirit is so evident and, uh, and the consolations from the Lord. If you walk in the ways of the Lord, then you walk in the ways of the Lord. It's 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 what are what we're meant to be. What we're meant to do is to walk in the Lord and lo to love God back. Yes, Amen, Amen. You know, to to ask the average believer to ask ourselves, uh, why why do I follow the Lord Jesus? And and the the only acceptable answer, the one that we should all yearn for, uh, is because I know He loves me. And I want to spend the rest of my life loving him back. Mm. And that's it. That is the only reward. So people who soft pedal the gospel, who try to come up with these health or wealth promises, or think that it should be this emotional satisfaction, like where in that 
pseudo gospel that they've created, where can anyone find the cross? And the mm. Lord tells us, if you want to follow me, you must take up your cross, right? So I sometimes joke, I said, the Lord didn't say, take up your lazy boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, take up your lawn chair. Like he said, take up your cross. And, and while that's provocative in any age, it was particularly pro provocative in his own because, you know, the cross was an instrument of torture by, you know, an occupying Gentile military force. Like this was horrific to take up your cross. Like wh what is he talking about? Like that scared people. And, and he says, if you want to follow me, this is what you must be willing to what, do. Is that, is that, it, what's going to happen now, Father? I mean, when we see what's happening today. People need to stand up for, the, for, for what's true. They may need to take action to join the school board, to, to run for Congress, to, to, um, to, to make sure their children are homeschooled if they, if they don't have an al a good alternative, things like that. But, but there's going to come. When I, I used to have this wonderful feeling when I'd lead someone to, to experience Jesus for the first time. I knew good things were in front of them. Now, when I have that experience, I think martyrdom, some form of martyrdom. There are many men that I know that said, well, I won't. They said, hey, we're having our gay pride week coming up. Or are you going to be, you want you to head up the committee or be on it? And they would say, well, I, I can't do that. It's against my, my, my Catholic conscience. Um, they don't get fired, but they don't get promoted. That's right. There's a martyrdom. That's a gentle martyrdom. But there's a yep. martyrdom. I, you, we got to get real about what's happening in our world today. We got to stand yes. up and be willing to pay. What does that mean to pay the price? What do we have yes, to do? Yes, yes. Yeah, well, I think those of us in the West, it's, it's difficult because for so long, you know, our culture matched our Christian teachings, our moral teachings. So, in many respects, for a couple hundred years, we were spoiled. I mean, we lived in a culture, you know, where previously we were told, you know, Father knows best. <laughs> we mm -hmm. actually had TV shows about this. So, you know, for a long time, we were just, very spoiled as Christian believers. And we and we started to think that that's the way it was supposed to be. But then as our culture started to change, many fellow believers began to change to accommodate to the culture. And, and so now we're at this point, we have to pause and step back and then look at the whole of salvation history, the whole of church history and say, wait a minute, where have we predominantly stood? And predominantly, the Christian has always been the oddball. We have been the ones who have said, we will defend the vulnerable and the weak. I think it's important that, that we know our own history, that before the Christian faith, there were no hospitals. People didn't care about the sick. There were no orphanages. People didn't care about orphans. There were no outreach centers. If you couldn't handle and take care of yourself, well, tough, right? The reason why these institutions exist in the West is because of the Christian faith, which is why the more we see the Christian faith diminish, we see a return to barbarism. Right. Mm. So we see this. We see the cruelty and, and the justified you know, maliciousness in our culture. And, and, and people are bewildered and shocked. Well, like, how could this happen? Well, explain this to me, because this is really it. It's the woke. The whole woke thing is Christian principles re rejecting God, throwing God out. And now we're going to try to apply what Western civilization, which was created by the Catholic Church, what it taught us. Yes. Help, help us understand yes, wokeness yes. in that yeah. context. Yeah, so this whole notion of wokeness uh, historically began really with the Enlightenment. Mm -hmm. You know, it, we call it the Enlightenment in history, we should really call it the Endarkenment, mm -hmm. right? Because we basically said that, well, religion and God no longer have a, have, have a, a factor or a place in our lives. Uh, we, we have we've grown beyond that superstition, right? And mm. now instead, uh, we are at a different, more enlightened stage. And that was the first assault in terms of the role of, of the gospel or, or revealed religion. You know, in civilization, so they stripped out all of the faith, and they said we can have Western civilization without the Christian faith, and it is slowly beginning to just unravel, mm -hmm. and we're seeing it get worse. And regrettably, bear like and believers studying to understand this, it's going to get worse, because mm -hmm. we have taken out the foundation, and the building is starting to crumble. There's and no so this whole yes. There's no no one more. There's no one less tolerant than someone that's preaching tolerance when a Christian stands up to make a stand. <laughs> Father, we, we have to go. Where can people find you? Yeah, so on YouTube, uh, Grace Lily Productions, and on Twitter, f at Father Kirby. Grace Lily Productions, and on Twitter, at Father Kirby. So I never ask uh, my guests if they'll return, but I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you, can we have another conversation uh, soon? This has been a powerful, powerful time with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's good talking with you, Bear. Would Very you, important stuff. We have 10 seconds. 20. 
Will you bless that person in the black pickup truck or that person right now that's saying, oh, my gosh, I need to get my, my, my life right? Will you bless that person who has that desire to come closer to God? Absolutely, yes. Let us pray. Father, we ask you to pour out your angels. Send them now to those who are most in need of your mercy, your love. We ask you to pour out your graces of conversion upon our nation, upon the world. May you bring us back to your face, Father, and help us to know your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, you know, in Hawaii, we say aloha. Ha means to give breath. And so the way we sign off here is the way that when Jesus said, My peace I give you, my peace I leave you, and he breathed his spirit. So we sign off like this. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you. That's right. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.